2,222. 2,223. 2,224. Ben, what are you doing? I'm doing sit-ups, obviously. Yeah, but why are you doing them on the kitchen top? Because abs are made in the kitchen, obviously. Yeah, but it's the food in the kitchen that creates the abs. Ben, what are you doing now? Making abs in the kitchen, baby. Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be going through basically me training abs every single day for a week. Well, pretty much wasn't a week. It was Monday to Friday because now as you can probably see, we're not in the UK, shit all. You're in the beautiful lands of Lanzarote where the sun is bright and the abs look tight. Well, they did. Now, if you're watching this video, then can I please ask a massive favor before we begin? Please drop it a like and a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe because I was looking at the analytics on the last video and as much as I appreciate all the love, there was 62, 62% that weren't subscribed. So please just hit that subscribe button so you will get more of my videos. <laughs> Fucking flies. Now just to jump straight in, this was me at the start of the week on Monday and this was me on Friday at the end of the week. So you can see there was a clear difference from that five day period which I'm gonna run through and why this has happened. Now, everyone wants better abs, everyone wants to look a little bit leaner, everyone wants to have that midsection with pops, especially when they're away on holiday or when they've got a top off. So I'm gonna run how so I'm gonna be running through how you can get tighter abs, better looking abs, look a bit better, feel a bit more confident in yourself. Now I, I never actually train abs every single day, to be honest. I've trained abs probably about two to three times in the past three months. I just hate training abs. I'm lazy and I just never train them. Now I'm gonna run you through Monday to Friday in the ab sessions that I did. I actually missed the first work or off, I do apologise, the camera wasn't recording properly, and I'm just lazy and didn't do it again. Fucking piss and swear. <laughs> well, ab sessions I did this week, you can pretty much do whatever you want, you can do them in the gym, you can do them at home, you can do them at your nan's house, you can do them pretty much wherever you wish. So most of the time this week I did circuits, it's just way more efficient, you can get way more done in a smaller time, and I'm a big fan of doing as little as possible to get the best result as possible. Because, again, I'm just lazy. Now the circuit that I was doing this week takes 12 minutes, so if you can't find 12 minutes in your day, you're either an absolute workaholic or just a liar. So the circuit consists of four exercises, which you do for 30 seconds each exercise, so one round takes two minutes. Duh. Now the reason that we're doing time and not reps is because it allows us to scale the workouts as we go on through the week. I, if you've got a midsection like a four-year-old jellyfish, then it allow you to work at an RP scale, i.e. rate of perceived exertion, which is based on how much effort you're putting in. So we start the week at a lower RP and we're kind of like, really struggling through the workouts, then we can start to like try and aim for more reps within that 30 seconds and just raise the intensity as the week goes on. <laughs> now we're taking 60 seconds rest time in between each work and set. So a lot of these jump in, jump back out and get the workout done nice and quick. One thing like you will notice from day two, I was that most anabolic lighting known to man does make a difference and a bit of manscaping. I kind of went for a two litre bottle of V before we got this ab workout done. So one way you can drop a couple pounds straight away and create some illusions is by whacking some V on, getting rid of all the hair. I guarantee it'll make you lose like four to five pounds or even happen to do anything. So if you're a guy, my advice would definitely be to ditch the 70s man rug and just get with the 21st century and just start grooming. Now Wednesday's workout, this was day three of training abs. Now one thing that you can tell and see straight away is that I probably don't look as lean on day three and this is just because of the lighting. So again, lighting does make a massive difference when I was just training at home under like natural lighting rather than blitzing the, the gym light, it does make a big difference. Now the one big thing and the one that thing that everyone does obviously say is that abs are created in the kitchen and they're 100% right. You can train abs as much as you want, but if you're not gonna diet and you're not gonna watch what you put in your face, then you're not gonna get abs. You're not gonna get a washboard, you're not gonna lose any body fat. The one thing that we need to do, the, the, probably the main thing when it comes to getting abs is sticking to caloric deficit. So the way that you can get to a calorie deficit is I will ping a free calorie calculator link in the link below, you can use that to work out your calorie deficit and they would be the calories for you to start dropping body fat. You can train abs as hard as you want. It's the same with any body part. You can train biceps, chest, shoulders as much as you want, but you won't be able to see that muscle tissue that have accumulated over a certain period of time unless you start to decrease body fat. You're just basically gonna be like a flump. Macros wise, again, I don't give a shit what people have in terms of carbs and fat. It's not something that I usually focus on with people. You wanna stick to a protein intake because you wanna be able to rest and recover, especially if you're doing what I've done this week where you train abs every single day. Now for me, there's no foods that are really off the market. There's 
no foods that will make you slimmer. There's no foods that will put on body fat. It's all in the quantity. Quantity is always the killer. Obviously, not literally. And it's the same, like, I don't want really you demonizing foods either. Like, you'll see a lot of bullshit online, like, you shouldn't be eating this, you should be eating that. This kind of fucking but butter in your coffee or vinegar in your fucking water is going to help you drop body fat. It's not. It's just exactly the same. Like, when you're a kid, one thing I don't want people doing is demonizing foods. Like, you shouldn't be saying, I'm not having that in my diet, because the first thing you will go and do is eat it in mass quantities and probably binge it. It's like when your mum probably said when you were a kid. Don't go and play with that guy down the road. What was the first thing that you went and did? You went running down the road to play with that kid who puts pencils up his bum, didn't you? Don't try and demonize stuff and create pink elephants and try and cut things off because you're only going to go back to them in abundance. The first thing we need to get right before we even start training is the food. And then calorie deficit, protein, trying at a gram per pound of body weight, and that should put you a nice round number and efficient enough to recover, grow. Now, Thursday, I was joined by the luscious Lucy, I ate the other half, I ate known as my better half. And one thing that does make a difference is having a bit of competition. Like, I train pretty much every day with Lucy or with someone else and having some competition sometimes, someone to bounce off, someone to feed off, often does help when you are lacking the motivation or you don't want to do something or you're feeling a little bit run down. Having some friendly competition there does really help. So if you can get a training partner, your mum, your nan, your dog, if you've got no mates then, I don't know what to suggest. Maybe sign off for Tinder or OnlyFans or something. The one thing that I did want to show you is that when it comes to body fat and the importance of sticking to the calorie deficit is that everyone is going to look different. Like if you look at Lucy's abs then, she can hold like maybe a higher percent of body fat and still see her abs. Um, everyone's different percentages of body fat. Everyone will hold body fat deposits in different areas. Some people hold in the lower body. I tend to hold on my lower back. I, I can tend to see my abs quite often, even when I get to higher ranges, where some people have to get mega low with the body fat to see the abs. Just genetically, everyone's made up differently, so it's something to consider. You may see someone who's 10% body fat who has mega lean abs. You might see someone who's 8% body fat and you can't see their abs at all. And this comes down to, I'm sure, you when you were a kid, you had that mate who was a genetic freak who you just wanted to... What did you want to do to him? You want to do something to him. The other thing is to remember, and it doesn't matter how many people on Instagram tell you or how many balance trying to sell you something, or how many people tell you to go for a jog in a fucking bin bag. It's not rocky, and we're not running slim as well, yeah? So don't go jogging in a bin bag. You can't spot reduced body fat. It's been shown time and time and time again. You can't spot reduced body fat. It comes down to genetic, and sometimes, if you need to lose that last bit off your lower belly fat, you've got a bit of a beer belly, you've got some man tits, you've got a bit of bingo wings, whatever it might be, then you just kind of have to get to a lower body fat if you really want to get there. But always remember, when you want to get those lower body fat percentages, you're going to have to sacrifice a little bit more to get there. And lastly, Thursday's message, cardio. I was doing a bit of cardio this week. It's not something that you have to do. Again, as we get further and further and towards that point of where we get our body fat lower and we still want to keep getting it lower, your body is going to become more efficient at dealing with that activity level and with that current calorie intake. So we are going to have some times where we have to go deeper into a calorie deficit and we don't want to drop our food any further. So cardio can be a help, but we don't always need it. A tool, not a necessity. A tool preferably that I'd love to just and never fucking see again. A Friday session I did at the gym after my training session. I always tend to usually do abs post weight training. I wouldn't do it before. And I switched this one up a little bit. Again, just for enjoyment. I'm getting bored of the same session, but I still did it in the same format. Doing 30 seconds per exercise. I just switched up the exercise a little bit. Again, I will still do abs every now and again, but I tend to just do like hanging leg raises or plank just to try and strengthen my core a little bit rather than try and do it for any other aesthetic purposes. Because of course, when we look at our abdomen area between the rib cage and the pelvis, it's just flesh. There's no bone there's no support there for the spine so it is a good idea even if you're not bothered about taking your top off flashing your abs about that we strengthen the core area for when we're going for the squats and the deadlifts and the compound movements just so we don't fold like a wet banana when it comes to doing those main compound movements and obviously to avoid injury and the reason why I'd advise but still do some abdominal work even if you're not bothered about having abs is because a lot of people say you can get a free compound list it's been shown in some research that only you only get a kind of 20% engagement to the abdomen area through the compound lift, which isn't really enough to create that extra demand and overload on the abs to help them to develop and get stronger. I would also get a mix of weighted and non-weighted. So again, with that workout, I'll throw in a dumbbell just to get movements in, hit some of the obliques, hanging leg raise, you can do the same, whack a dumbbell in between the legs, just help create some more demand and progressive overload the exercise. The things that I wouldn't do and that you don't particularly need, fat burners, again, I just think they're a waste unless you're at a mega low body fat. I think they help with suppressing appetite and helping increase energy levels when you're at that last bit and you're trying to push down the last bit of body fat. If you are someone who's fat, obese, carrying a lot of body fat, not for you, mate. You don't need them. And please don't buy into any of the fads like skinny jabs, booty tea, fry your fat, whatever the fuck it is. If it's telling you you can get it in two weeks, it's bullshit. If you want to get abs, it's going to take hard work. Three things you need to remember, calorie deficit, praying hard, sleep.
It's actually not complicated. People just like to overcomplicate things and don't like to commit. So obviously this image was me at the end of the week and the reason why I look so much different from the start to the end is because basically I've just reduced my body fat percentage. I could have probably not trained abs at all this week and I still would look better from day one to day five just because I've been reducing my body fat by doing some extra cardio, increasing my caloric deficit and also, big one, that was 10k steps per day by the way. Just in case you didn't get that. So again, using the Apple Watch, just an app on your phone. That was your phone, by the way. And take 10K steps per day, massively increases your total energy expenditure of the day. A lot of people think that they create more demand and burn more calories through doing a gym workout, but you'll burn far more calories than just doing like an hour's walk or hitting 10K steps in a day total and just increasing your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. One thing I would advise, just like I've done, I take images uh, like maybe once a week even once a month, just to make that comparison. Weight isn't always gonna play a factor in how much your abs progress, especially if you're building muscle tissue at the same time, which can cause spikes and troughs on, this, on the scale. So i.e. get your nudes in, preferably not to me. Not to your mum either, probably. How much should you be looking to lose per week in terms of body fat to reveal your abs? Again, very, very general, and it depends. If you're starting a mega high body fat percentage, the most that I would go would be three pounds per week. Anything more than that, you're gonna start losing muscle tissue. But if you're mega lean, even losing one pound per week is gonna make a massive difference to your overall body fat percentage and how much you can see your abs. So you've also shown that obviously training abs six times per week or five times per week like I've done has had no impact on losing lower belly fat or losing belly fat in general. And again, this kind of just highlights how important diet is and reducing belly fat. Exercise alone isn't gonna do it. So you can sit in your bedroom, do as many sit-ups as you want, do as many crunches as you want, and basically just sit up till you herniate, and you're still not gonna have any better abs than the guy who just simply sticks to his calorie deficit. So the real take home from this video is that you don't need to do abs 20 times a week. Even doing one to two times a week is really gonna help, especially if you're doing nothing at the moment. The big thing is just to watch what is, is passing through your lips. Probably downloading my fitness pal, just putting what you're currently having into a day and then using that calorie calculator link that I dropped, dropped in the link in the bio is massively gonna help work out how to calculate your calorie deficit. And I'll guarantee you'll start losing body fat, you'll be able to see abs better. And it'll probably motivate you to train abs a little bit more when you can start to see them. I notice this massively that when you start to drop body fat, it'll make you way more motivated because you see progress way quicker. Bit of a different video today, but I'll drop something informative into the mixer. I'm gonna be putting another vlog up hopefully this week from the Isle of Lanzarote, potentially food based because I'm starving. If you found this video helpful and informative, then hit please hit that like button. And to make sure that you catch my next video, and please hit that subscribe button. And even if you're feeling generous, hit, hit the little bell button. And yeah, I'll uh, see you in the next video. Bye guys. I'm flies, bastard. I'm flies.